thank you so much, Sonic Youth, for coming and and coming on our show. It's it's a great honour. Thurston, Lee, and Kim, give oh, them another round me. of applause. Where to start? Where to start? We've actually seen you on this show before, Thurston. We actually mm -hmm. played some stuff from High Octane. Do you remember that show, oh, yeah, Thurston's yeah, yeah. Alley? We love that. Is that show still going? That's a pretty good show. They, um, it was done by um, Sofia Coppola and ah. her friend... Francis um, Ford Zoe, Coppola's... Zoe Cassavetes. Daughter. Zoe Cassavetes, yeah. Francis Ford's daughter, daughter? Um, Sophia. And, um, and she has a friend, uh, Zoe Cassavetes, who's the daughter of uh, John Cassavetes, the film director. Um, and they just sort of did the show. They they um, did I think four or five different um, shows, and uh, it showed on this um, network in um, America called Comedy Network. Mm. We played some of it. We loved it. Thurston Alley. Yeah, Valley's they asked right. me to do that. That alley is right next to our apartment, and oh. it's like this really sort of fetid, kind of smelly alleyway. <laughs> and so we would sit there and we would interview people. But everybody uh, shoots stuff there. Like every day, there's a video shoot or a photo shoot or a. It's, Actually, a lot of so rap funny. videos that you probably see on TV are shot in that alleyway. God, the famous alley. This is kind the of Sonic famous Youth alleyway. apartment alley. <laughs> That'd be very fun. Uh, I guess we should backtrack a little bit before we talk about the brand new album. You got together back in New York, all the way back in 81. Um, can you tell us, you're part of the No Wave movement. Can you tell us a bit about what musical environment was going on around you when you got back, when you got together back in 81? Yeah, when we lived in New York, I mean, when we first started, and we started around 80, 81, and we all sort of moved to New York in the late 70s, I mean, 77, 78, 79, we were all sort of living there and just sort of experiencing that whole kind of world that was going on at CBGB's, and there's this place called Max's Kansas City, and all these bands were playing, you know, like Patti Smith and Television and Talking Heads and all these bands, and by the time we moved there, um, a lot of those bands had sort of kind of left in a way. I mean, I know Patty sort of got married and went to Detroit and television sort of stopped performing after a while and Talking Heads became really famous and Blondie became, and so things were changed, but all these, there was this whole new influx of people who uh, moved to New York that were, a lot of them were sort of coming out of art schools or visual artists where they're just sort of people who were just kind of aliens and they would just come into New York and they just wanted to do sort of um, work that was, um, inspired by sort of the punk rock scene and so therefore it was really sort of experimental and kind of radical. It was a really small scene at that time. It wasn't sort of the big thing that we know now but then it was just sort of situated around CBGB and, and sort of the Soho section of New York where the art galleries were and so sort of all these sort of new ideas were coming in. Um, the No Wave scene was a lot of young people like Lydia Lunch and James Chance etc. Et you were part of that too weren't you Kim? Well not really. I mean you know I sort of moved to New York at the tail end of the No Wave thing before the burgeoning of the big art market of the 80s. And at that time, a lot of the artists who, who got really big in the 80s were involved in music, and, and there was a lot of cross um, mixing, you know, with art and music and stuff, and music at art spaces and stuff like that. But, um, Lydia Lunch, did you meet her? Yeah. Hang out yeah. With her? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they sort of came in at the tail end of that whole scene, so we were privy to watch the No Wave stuff happening and become friends with a lot of those people, but we were part of sort of like the next sort of generation of a lot of young people that were in New York trying to form bands out of that stuff. Swans, Live Skull, Rat at Red R. That stuff. <laughs> huge, Stuff huge. that nobody knows anything about Sonic used to sort of started at the tail end. I mean, we were living there. Yeah. And we sort of witnessed the whole thing. And we just sort of knew those people. I mean, at the time, it was, it, like I said, it was a really sort of small deal. I mean, it wasn't like an international. Band. No, no. I mean, most of those bands never. There weren't even any record labels or anything. So really if you weren't all. there, you really didn't get a real taste of it in a way. I mean, at that Pretty time, the, the whole climate was, is, was doing sort of kind of just progressive and experimental music as punk rock in a way. And that's sort of what punk rock was when it first started. It was kind of, it sort of had artistic notions. and. So in a way, it, it's, things sort of got changed in the 80s a lot. I think it sort of became more sort of, um, you know, it, it sort of went against the idea of actually doing stuff that was sort of had any relation to the art world in a way. It was, it, it was kind of funny. It's just sort of now that it's coming back around again where it's like, yeah, it's, it's actually really cool to do experimental music mm. in a way. So we feel really good about that. Well, the thing about Sonic Youth is you've managed to 
keep progressive and remain experimental. You've been signed to a major record label for the last eight to ten years, but you've always managed to keep your artistic freedom and your creative control and always be leaders and people have followed you and hailed you. I mean, how have you managed that over all those years, over, what is it, 18 years now? We just do it. I mean, you know, we've never really had any sort of ambitions to, like, do anything else. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you don't, whole, you don't let anyone really tell had, you what to do. We never thought about doing anything beyond a certain point, which is, you know, just being able to uh, do what we do as a full-time job and not have to work day jobs, to, you know, to support it. And so that's basically it all. Anything after that was was kind of lucky, you know. Just try and keep focused on the music and not let the business or trends or whatever's happening sort of get in the way. Which I imagine for a lot of bands must be very hard, you know, who who are signed to major labels. A, a lot of bands, you know, that yeah. have to conform. Yeah, we're in a pretty lucky situation because by the time we were signed, we already were pretty well established. So the label kind of realizes if they tried to do anything but let us be, they'd sort of screw up a good thing in a way. But you know, there's room for everybody. Yes, yeah. everyone everyone can, can be everywhere. Thank you for playing Sunday, the first single from, from this album, your 14th, A Thousand Leaves. We will, we, will see you, uh, we will see you playing some more. Um, great album, very much. You know, Sunday is probably, you know, one of the standout tracks, but the rest is free form and long flowing. Your approach to this album? As opposed to other ones. Oh, I don't know. It was that record is just sort of contemporary to where we are at. I mean, it's like any record; you just sort of make it, and it sort of it reflects where you are as people at, at that given time. I mean, that's I think. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Music Man. <laughs> we, we have our own studio now that we made this record in, and so we were a lot more comfortable playing. We were a lot freer to sort of stretch out and not worry about anything; just kind of play for ourselves and sort of make the music we wanted to on this record. And I heard your daughter Coco had a very big part in this record too. She switched on light switches for you. Yeah, yeah. That's she, very important. She was doing the light show while we played. We always need a light show when we play in a way so at this point in time. Could you please thank Sonic Youth? <laughs> yeah. Please welcome back to the Recovery Studios, Sonic Youth! <laughs>